what time do we get to Mirabar or get inside Mirabar, would you say? About like 2 p.m. So my question is, would it make sense to try to do like have the whole party go and try to find Remy now? Or should like we split it and half of us go find Remy and half of us go talk to Crowen? I would like to go with you, Body, to go talk to the Hoppers because that seems like our most direct route to get this problem sorted immediately. I think now that I'm speaking out loud, it might be a good idea to wait until we are ready to leave to go speak to the Harpers because the teleportation circle is right there. So once we finish up here at Mirabar, we can all just jump into the teleportation circle at the same time. We don't have to go talk to the Harpers, come back, regroup, then go back. So you do know the, how the teleportation circles work is that there is one in Mirabar and you have to go to the one that's in Mirabar to be teleported to the one that's in Everland. So there's a, yeah, there's a solid place where it is, which if uh, you're looking at the map and the locations that Crowen gave to you, the one that's in Mirabar is in a stable house on the west end of town. Oh, so it's not in the, mo the Moongleam Tower? It's That's the one in Everland. But the one in Mirabar, oh, you have to right. go to first to teleport to using that circle to go to the other one. Because there is someone in Everland that will use teleport on you to move you. Got it, got it. That was my mistake. I thought that the when we first met with Crowen was in Mirabar, not in Everland. So No, all the way around. I'm going to pop in in Everland and be like, Body's here. What's up? <laughs> so you guys are in Everland. Uh, what do you guys do? I'm assuming you want to try and find some place to stay for a night. Uh, and we're in Mirabar. Don't make the same mistake I did. <laughs> Mirabar, whatever. <laughs> you confused me. Um, hold on. Is Mirabar the one where you had your your ex boyfriend, Pump Griff Bannon, Bannon Craft Pimp? Uh, Everland was Griff Bannon. Yeah. Crimp Pump Pump Griff. <laughs> Crimp Pump Pump, Pump, Pump Griff was not unfortunately in this campaign. Ah, uh, you know what though? If there was ever to be an ex of Barty's, <laughs> <laughs> we should get Jackson Bailey to guest star on our show. Oh my. God. God, a secret ex boyfriend as a secret as a secret ex lover to Barty. He would have a joy with that. <laughs> yes, he would. All right. So, what are you guys doing? Surreal's gonna write a note to Mary, just as a backup. Say we're gonna try it with the Harpers and see if we can get closer that way. But we need further assistance getting quickly to another place. I would appreciate her help. So you send a letter to her. Uh, you don't get any anything back immediately, but you do know that it is sent. Zell, as soon as no one's looking at him, runs away. Of course. While he's away, he's assisting in burial rites with anyone who died. Oh, so he's not trying to leave the party like other people who run away. Got it. I'm going to start a trend. I assume you guys get a inn for the night to, or go to an inn or a hotel or something for the night to rest. Well, is Moose doing anything about Remy? Uh, I think I want to go find Remy before that, though. Okay. Uh, you can go on the outskirts of town and kind of wait around a bit and make a survival check. I secretly talk to Flock and ask him to follow Moose to make sure she doesn't run away again. You don't trust me, motherfucker? <laughs> not at all. I, not right now. I did. I did. As a point of, like, surreal trying to be respectful, she will ask Moose if she wants company, but respect any decision that Moose makes. Yeah, all right. But she's to be cool about it. She's to be like, yeah, I don't care. I don't care. I don't yeah, whatever. Come if you want. I don't give a shit. If if she sees Flock following, she's just going to tap one of her horns and Flock can chill out on on one of uh, Surreal's horns. That's so cute. Flock plants and he's like, kind of does a little butt scoot. I love the idea that now is when Flock, like this version of Flock is much more cooperative. <laughs> it's like yeah. a little bit understanding, much more patient. <laughs> Not calling you a piece of shit all the time. As Flock kind of lands on Surreal, Flock looks back at Barty and like in very typical bird fashion has their wings up and just use the whole like eyes yeah. to Barty. And it's just like, don't you cause trouble while we're in here. We know what happened in Mirabar. I'll get you, I'll get you snacks. Uh, I rolled a 23 survival check. So you run to the outskirts of town, kind of look around for a bit and eventually like kind of up on a hill. Given what you've known about Remy and uh, what you learned about Remy the last time you spoke to him, you're like, he's probably up over in the hills and you kind of look around and you see a person standing at the top of a hill just kind of like looking around and surveying and then looks down at you and he's like the head tilts to the side and he's like the fuck and then he starts running down the hill Aww. <laughs> is he like aragorn is he's just standing there like heroic arms out just looking and then as soon as you come his like back slouches a bit and he's like the <laughs> fuck? yeah and then just runs straight down the hill towards you and he's like hey 
And Moose just like, in very uncharacteristic Moose fashion, just like throws her arms around him. He like stops for a second and like kind of like, is like a little shocked because he didn't expect this. And is like, oh, okay. And just gives you a big hug. All right, cool, 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 cool. <clears throat> I don't cool, want to talk cool. about yep, it. Yep, cool. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Hey, what are you doing here? What What are you doing what, here? No, like, I was you... fighting giants. Oh, because hey, we're fighting giants too. I know from last time. Yeah, <laughs> you still doing that? Yeah, that's that's all right. Yeah, I don't think we haven't fought a giant since we saw you last time, but we're going to fight more giants. Okay, all right. Oh, mm, all right. <laughs> I just got together with uh, some of my high school friends, and you know those like first like. 30 minutes where it's really awkward because you haven't seen each other in so long and you're like, fuck, are we, is this going to be just like old times or is this going to be awkward? I feel like this is that moment right now. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, I had a Zoom call with friends from middle school that I have not Ooh. spoken to since eighth grade. Wow. And there was like an awkward like, so I've lived half my life never speaking to you. What? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> How's it been since a 15 year old was born and grew up? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> so, yeah, he, he turns to both of you and he's like, oh, uh, surreal. Good to see you again. Hey. Um, so, what brings you all to Mirabar? How'd you get in? I thought they were like closing things down. We're cool. That's, that's true. Drew, we can't hear you. It was a dumb joke. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I want to hear your dumb jokes. I want to hear all of them. Uh... I said magic. <laughs> magic. Yeah, I said it all. Cackle, 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 cackle. All right. All right. <laughs> She's like, I'm never going to say anything again. <laughs> He's like, I fully warned you. You asked for this. This isn't my fault now. <laughs> yeah, we had a, got an in with uh, Harshnag. Gotcha. 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 All right. Um, well, yeah. No, there there was a uh, there was a fire giant attack. Uh, I want to say about like three days ago. Oh, those ones are the worst ones. Yeah, they suck. A lot of people got hurt. A lot of people died. And right now, I'm just trying to make sure that the ones that got away don't come back. Uh, there was there was upwards of about like 20 to 25. Brought down about 15. The rest uh, retreated. But from what I can understand, they were trying to get into the mines on the opposite side of Mirabar. Uh, I'm assuming they wanted something that was in there. I'm not entirely sure. What's this butt mentioned something about mines? I wasn't really paying attention. There's a, a whole bunch of mines north of Mirabar. It's where a lot of uh, a lot of ore uh, that Mirabar exports comes from. Uh, the dwarves that are in the mines spend a lot of time excavating. Huh. And they were, they were trying to get into the mines. That seemed to be what they were trying to get to. Uh, they announced that they wanted into the mines. Nobody would let them through, so they attacked. What kind of ore? I assume iron, mostly. So you think it might be... Do they say anything about it? Do they say anything weird? I was, uh, wasn't was necessarily there for the beginning part. I just kind of jumped in when the fighting started. I d don't think I was told they said anything specific or weird. They just wanted into the mines and then no one would let them and they got mad. Yeah, I have a feeling they didn't show up and knock on the door and they were like, hey, there's a pony in the mines that we want. Can we please have the pony in the mines? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't really seem like what they were trying to do. Who puts the pony in the mines? Does Zell just show up? <laughs> Does he just pop up? <laughs> He's very fast. He can get around very yes, quickly. Yes, he can. Oh, hey. Goodbye. <laughs> oh. Okay, bye. I should hunters mark him one day just so I like know where he is. <laughs> Keep track, yeah. yeah. Uh, the giants at Brinshander definitely said we're here for Artist Simber. So they were pretty clear about their intentions. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if uh, there was a similar declaration of we're here for a specific thing. We didn't ever really find out what was up with that. Is Artist Simber in the mines? Excuse me, let me check my uh, 35 pages of notes. Hold, please. Oh, no, I can actually explain this since you did learn about it. Uh, you remember that that there was a person named Sirik that was a friend of Luther's uh, who you realized was an illegitimate son of Artist Simber and that they were tracking Artist Simber and somehow wound up looking for Sirik instead. Well, yeah, but I, we don't know why they were looking for Artis. No, no, we never figured that out. They just yeah. said, we're looking for Artis Simber, and then you said, fuck off, and they said, okay, and then they fought you. And we killed them. But we do know that Artis Simber had the Ring of Winter at last, but that might not even be on in Faerun. And we were gonna, because I just edited that episode and we completely fucking forgot about it, we were gonna ask on our next round of questions that we had with Anam to ask where Artist Simber or the Ring of Winter was, and we forgot. Ha! Ha! On the other hand, again, if we had asked, it might have been like, 
You must prove yourself. You must go get the jellyfish. Well, to call back to an earlier joke, hey, Zelda, you want to run the chult real quick? No. <laughs> <laughs> I already did that. I came back with coffee. Chulty and coffee is the best coffee. He just uh, strolls up on a dinosaur and everybody's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I found this. <laughs> just have little adventures on the side. We should maybe ask the leader of Mirabar and see if there is something in the mines other than just iron. Maybe they need it for weapons or... I have a feeling if they knew what was in the mines that was different, we would know what's in the mines. On the other hand, they maybe don't want the general populace to know if there's something fancy in there to keep people from being weird about it. Judging from the armor and weapons they were carrying, they did not seem to have any shortage of iron. Because, good God, that stuff was ex just whew, tough. Alright. So, there might be something fancy in there. I don't know. How'd you know I was here, by the way? A very excitable gnome. A grimble Tomber Bottom? Tim oh, Garble. Garble. Oh, you, you meant Garble. Gotcha. Okay. Gron yeah, yeah, yeah. Grondard I'm at least glad he's Bonder. okay. I'm glad. <laughs> Timber bottom, yeah. No, he helped me out when I was. Grounder, uh, Tonder, Bonder. Grounder, Tonder, Bonder. Sorry. I, I... <laughs> Grinder, Timber bottom, Tinder bottom, yeah. <laughs> you garble that Tinder bottom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking God. He's like, oh, all right, so you met Garble. Um, uh, um, yeah, he was helping me out um, a while back when I, when I made my way out of. Long saddle and came up to here. He's old friends of uh, mom and pa. I wonder when the last time Garble saw Moose's parents was. Like, was it after Moose last saw them? Would we be able to get Gar? Would did Moose's mom say to Garble, "I'm just so happy Moose left, and is safe somewhere else." Are you having this conversation out loud? Oh, I'm just talking to myself. He's in the town. He's not even anywhere near you guys. <laughs> Are you talking to me? Because I'm with you. Are you just... Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. I'm talking to Mortimer as we're walking the streets <laughs> of Mirabar. I mean, like, huh. I don't know. I mean, I'm guessing it was a long time ago, but I don't know. What an excitable fellow, though. <laughs> Zell just pops in behind listening to the conversation. I wonder that, too. Goodbye. So Remy just kind of says, uh, yeah, no, we were, we, he kind of helped me out. Uh, he actually gave me, helped me make that collar that, uh, that Anna has on. But yeah, he's a good guy. He's a good friend. He has a lot of interesting things in his shop. Really helpful stuff, too. I don't remember him from when we were kids. Did... We never met him. I never met him either. Um, right. Our parents' secret labs. Yeah, that's right. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, so I'm assuming they, they were friends when they lived in Long Saddle before, uh, they started the quarry. Right. Okay, well, bye. There's a lot of interesting, helpful stuff in the junkyard. The DM says, fucking go there. <laughs> if you want, it's up to you. So Remy uh, darts off and continues making a perimeter, keeping an eye out for, for fire giants. Anything else you guys want to do before uh, you find an inn and rest for the night? Before we leave, I'll just tell Remy where we're staying if he needs to get in contact with us. Is there anything else we need to do in Mirabar? I want to head to the junkyard because now there's interesting shit there. My interest is peaked, but also I want to talk to the leader, Mr. Russian accent. Selin Rorum. Harnarar? Selin, Selin Rorum. I want to ask him about the mines. He's basically with all of the guards looking at the damage that was caused and overseeing a lot of what's happening. And you turn around, he turns around and sees you and he says, oh, hello. Uh, is there something I can help you with? We were in Bridgestander when the Frost Giants attacked there, and they were very specific about what they wanted. They wanted some dude named Artist Simber, and maybe the Ring of Winter that he had, or something like that. I know that uh, we talked to someone who was here during the attack, and he couldn't tell us if they wanted something specific out of the mines, but if there's something in there that might be important to them. So when they initially came to the gates they ordered us to stand aside and uh, allow them access to the mines uh, which we refused because fuck them yeah fair uh, they did not specify what they were looking for uh, i checked in with the members of the mines to see if they had discovered anything that might have been of interest and so far no they have not seen anything out of the ordinary other than the normal iron veins that they cultivate iron from uh, some gold that they found that's really all that they've been able to find. 
but the fire giants did not uh, have give, give us any specifics. They were very rude, as you would expect. They are very angry. They did not give us much leeway when we refused to open the gates as they attacked immediately. All right. Could you, um, could you maybe point out who I could talk to at the mine just to make sure there's... We've been through a lot of giant, like, relics and temples and stuff, so there might be something that I've seen that might jump out to me that wouldn't for them. Yes, I can, I can most likely point you towards someone who could be of assistance. Here's, here's some of the names that Hannah has put in the wiki. Mr. Russian Spy, Smellin' Borum, Tellin' Forum, and in all caps... Yellin Morum! <laughs> Yellin Morum! I will thank Selen Rorum for his time, and then I will go find the, uh, whoever. Uh, so he gives you the name Orim Thunderdelver. Orim, what is with these, like, Rorum sounds? Bucky has a list of NPC names, and he just writes them down as they come to him, and you just can't blame him for every once in a while hitting a rhyming scheme and just coming up with, like, 14 names. So you're gonna hit a lot of- Yep, that list of names is called npcgenerator.com. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I should always have that up. I'm terrible at calling. Last last game I ran, I had somebody named Jason Bourne, and, <laughs> um, and uh, I was like, I I didn't have a plan for this person's name. Uh, Jason J- Jason Bourne. Oh my god, it's Jason Bourne. <laughs> Except for he's actually a quiet librarian. Yeah. Uh, so Surreal's gonna take a little trip over to Orium Thunder Delver and or. Quorum Punder Shelver for the wiki. Don't tell everybody all of my names. They're my secret names, Morgan. If they don't read the wiki, it's right. their fault. So, uh, Salen also does inform you that the mines are about a day's travel away from Mirabar. Then why did the giants even come to Mirabar and not just go straight to the mines? Thank you. Because there is a massive river in the way that they can't get past. That kind of cuts through the city of Mirabar. Are you telling me giants can't bring a bridge. It's a big river. <laughs> the fire giants, they don't know how to swim. It's Pokemon rules. Now I, now I know that giants have a weakness to water, so... <laughs> Jot that down. Don't like water. They can't swim. <laughs> oh, maybe if they're in running water, they take damage because they're vampire fire giants. Mmm, yes. That would explain a lot. <laughs> junkyard. Junkyard, 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 junkyard. Uh, Moose, you come back into town. It's surreal. You went and go talk to Selen. I can't go to the mines, so I'm good to go back to the junkyard. I'll say when you come back in, you end up meeting up with Mortimer and Barty. Uh, I have no idea where Zell went. You, Drew, you're going to have to help me where you went. He's just running around the town. You can run into them at any moment. Basically, uh, Zell, as you're kind of going around the town, you end up seeing that Mortimer, Barty, and Moose kind of all congregate in the same area. Surreal's kind of tagging behind as she went to go talk to Selen and they end up all meeting back up. He'll just wander back over. And Moose wants to go to the junkyard. Does everybody else want to go to the junkyard? Yeah, I do. Why not? There's apparently interesting stuff there. And I've got like 1,300 gold. Barty is not going to go to the junkyard. Barty is going to take this time to continue healing and helping the townspeople. Nick really wants to go to the junkyard because he feels like he's going to, he's missing out on some really cool shit. I'm going to find the most Barty item I can, and I'm going to take it. Oh. Keep it forever. <laughs> it's going to be an item that's specifically made for an Aarakocra, but Zell's not going to part with <laughs> this it. This is mine now. <laughs> I will say, Nick, you're probably okay, because a lot of these big fancy items need attunement, and you've already got a lot True, of stuff. Yeah, so. yeah, very good point. Yeah, so Barty's not going to go to the junkyard, but I am still going to listen closely. I will say, John, I will be with Barty going around town as well because I don't have a lot of extra funds. And because we can't stay and help more, I'm trying to get my help the people out out of the way now. So you run off. Everybody else goes to the junkyard. You take some time and kind of traverse through the town and you find off over in a corner what literally looks like a shed. It looks like a shed that has like metal patched onto it in several different places and a door where the window is a big cog wheel. Okay. So you guys end up seeing the door. Currently, it is slightly open, and you guys walk in, and you see, quite literally, a junkyard. There is just scrap metal, pieces of discarded, like, robotic parts and machines, and, like, like constructs just broken and, like, just littered all over the place. And there's, like, a very small, narrow pathway that kind of, like, curves to a bit, right to the desk in the back where you can see... Garble is there with his glasses like all flipped down and he's currently like looks like he's soldering something onto like a weapon of some kind and he hears you come in and he goes oh hi and he like flips his glasses back up and he's like hello again it's uh good to see you hey Garble hi did you see Rebby yeah 
Good, 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 good. He's out there. He's killing giants. Family trade. Um, how are you? I'm really excited to get into whatever's going on here. Oh, uh, so this is my shop. Uh, and uh, also you see crawling around inside the junk. You see things moving kind of all over the place. Moose is going to go after one of them. You see a bunch of mechanical animals. You see a gecko, a bearded dragon, and a guana, two clockwork cats, and five clockwork birds. Just all sitting around in different places, making noises, hanging out. One of the cats kind of runs up to you and does the cat thing of like, kind of like nudges your your leg and like purrs as it goes past you. And the geckos are kind of just like sitting on the wall. That's so cool. Did you make these? Oh yeah, I, I make all this stuff. Well, that's all scrap that I have to get to. But those are my parts. I, I, I do custom orders for machinery and upgrades on things and I make some magic items. Moose just wants to start like picking through the rubble to see if she can see anything that's shiny or exciting. He kind of like takes a look over towards you and you just kind of like look through, uh, make a perception check. 22. As you're kind of like moving some parts around, you like lift one like big sh- like sheet of metal up and underneath it, you see what looks like the head of a clockwork dragon. <gasps> just like broken in half. There's like gears and springs all like sticking out of the top of its head. That's cool. I can't do anything with that, but that's cool. He kind of says, oh, um, you know what? I have something for you. I have something that might help you guys. Um, oh. Because I assume uh, you're doing something important. And I I was friends with your parents and I owe them a favor. So I gave you guys something. And he like goes behind the desk into the door uh, behind and like you hear like things clattering and falling over and like shit being thrown all over the place. A actual bird flies out. Yep, yep. Another, like you see like several other animals like fly out and he comes back and he puts this uh, cube that's about four inches on each side and he just puts it on the table and he says, here, this might help you. Mm, I don't need a coaster, but... No, it's 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 a magic item. It's called I call it the Magigon Cube. The Magic Gone Cube? Yes. Like, adios, sayonara, bye-bye? You can put this near uh, magical, like, enchantments or implements or certain things like that, and uh, if you give it a minute, it'll start to open up, and then it might suck out the magic of whatever's there. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. You made this? Yeah. Well, damn, man. <laughs> there, you can have this free of charge. As a thank you. Thank you, Garble. No problem. I wish you luck on whatever you're doing. Well, thanks for that too, because we probably need it. Oh. Oh. Okay. Um, I get to take a look around, see if there's anything interesting for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's 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 a shop, but there's not really like a lot up on display. He mostly deals with like custom orders, I would say. Okay. Uh, case by case basis. If there's something that someone wants fixed or someone wants enchanted, he will deal with it. Hey, can I? show him my glaive yeah he takes a look at it and he's like whoa yeah it's listen it's it's pretty cool that's really cool right now i can do i, I think i've got four charges on it uh-huh do you think there's any way to get more charges on it you mind if i take a look yeah go for it so he takes the glaive pops it down and he's like whoa well, that's, that's that's heavier than i thought yeah and he pops it down he takes a, he like looks at the inside and he like kind of pokes around. He like flips his cog glasses down so he gets like a magnified look at it. And he's like, hmm. All right, so the barrels are attached there. Um, uh, yeah, I might be able to put two more barrels on there. I might be able to fashion something and put maybe two more on there so you could have maybe six shots instead of four. Who'd be into that? How much would that cost? For you, I would say with cost of labor and all that, and I'll give you a deduction because of your friendship with people that I know. Uh, 50 gold. 50 gold, yeah, let's do it. Okay, cool. I'm gonna give him 75 as a tip. Shit. He ends up walking over to where Moose was near that dragon, and he just lifts up the sheet, and he looks into the eyes and pulls out two big barrels that are make up the eyes of this clockwork dragon. He's like, these will do. And he walks over and starts to get to work. He's like, uh, if you leave this here with me, I can probably get it ready for you by tomorrow. Oh, that would be awesome. Um, all right, I'm gonna take a look around and see if there's anything... Oh, wait, I think I just added 75 gold and didn't spend it. Let me... Yeah, I did. All right. He gave you 75 gold for him to make this thing. (laughs) You should be paying me for the pleasure to touch this thing. (laughs) It's so cool. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to take a look around and see if there's anything other interesting that maybe Barty or Zell would be interested in or Mortimer. I was going to say when uh, when Surreal and Moose are once again distracted from not paying attention, Zell's going to go over and lean really close and be like, I want to go very fast. 
<laughs> well, buddy, it's a big town. Also, I you go so fast already, Zell. I don't know if there's any way that this little gnome is going to make you, beside putting rocket boots on you. Are you? Oh my God. Are you Morgan saying rocket boots are a bad idea? Because Drew says yes. Yeah. <laughs> You know what, though? If there's a boost of haste, like boots of haste in here, Zell would be literally the Flash. Fingers crossed. <laughs> also, quick, uh, I'm not here, but in our inventory, we have a cracked hourglass. And John said sessions ago, there may be a place that we can sell it or something. This may be something you can sell here and get it off our inventory. Just saying. He makes a time turner for me. We've broken into the Harry Potter universe. There you go. Yeah, I, I can I can dig that out of, because I've got the back of holding. I will also dig the cracked hourglass out and see if there's anything he can do with that. Okay. Uh, he takes a look at it and he says, oh, yeah, I can probably fix that right now. Okay. That's not that bad of a crack. So it's just like a regular hourglass? Then? Yeah, it's just a regular hourglass. Okay. Uh, I believe I said it was worth a certain amount of money if you got it fixed. But he's like, here, I'll, I'll take it. And he pops it down and you see, he rubs his hands together really quickly and puts his hands on the hourglass and you see like this blue glow kind of emanate out from his hands as the crack slowly seals up. How much for fixing that? Oh, that's that's free. That's just a simple spell. That's that's not that bad. Well, thank you. So I'll take that back. Do you have boots that can make this cat go even faster? This cat? Faster? Uh, I don't think I have anything like that right now, but let me take a look at something. And he kind of goes digging and digging and digging. And he comes back with these uh, metal boots. Uh, not necessarily faster, but these boots might be able to do something else for you. And he drops them on the table and he clicks a button on the side and you see this like gear contraption kind of flip over as you see this like small metallic bird wing flip off towards the side as these are a pair of winged boots. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> it's real. I'm putting my foot down. Moose, you may be putting your foot down, but Drew's putting his foot down in that boot. In the, boot. <laughs> in the, the boots boot. are already gone. What do these? Uh, what do these do? So these are boots that can help you fly for a certain amount of time throughout the day. That would bring the amount of party members that can fly up to three. I'll hang out with the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> So the winged boots, uh, while you wear these boots, you have a flying speed equal to your walking speed. You can use the boots to fly for up to four hours all at once or in several shorter flights, each one using a minimum of one minute from the duration. If you are flying when the duration expires, you descend at a rate of 30 feet per round until you land. The boots regain two hours of flying capability for every 12 hours they aren't in use, and they cost 2,500 gold. Barty, Barty's just becoming less and less necessary to the party. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for the teleportation circles, he would totally nah, need, uh, be okay with leaving the party right now. Uh, Mary's coming with more teleportation circles. Dude, no, it's like Captain Planet rules. Like, you're the heart. <laughs> Barty's Aww, the you. heart. We can't thank have Captain Planet. Mm -hmm. I also don't heart. think that John is going to let me bring my level 20 girlfriend into this. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say that Mary is next to fucking useless in an actual fight because she all has, like, support and there's nothing, like, offensive. She's not a cannon. Yeah. No, 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 no. She's literally just manipulation and everything else. So she's not very useful in a fight at all. The party funds right now have 1130 gold and 5000 silver. 1630 gold. I would say whoever's doing this, make a persuasion check. Well, I, or you know what? I asked for them. So I will, I will make a persuasion check. Uh, 19. He kind of looks at you, looks at you guys like counting up gold and like figuring things out and like looking at the logistics and he's like, you know what? We'll call it 2,000. We'll just call it 2,000 and that's it. All right. So Zell's got 1,200 and then plus 500. I will also put in from my end, I'll put in 300 so that uh, he's not bankrupt. Does that make math? Does that make math? Uh, 1,200 plus 500 is 17 plus 3 is 12. It's 2,000, yes. I don't know if it makes math, but it is, it is a math. I'll also say for the inn that you guys were sleeping for the night, I'll just say it's a gold for all of you. All right. So we can take this for the party funds. Yep, I'll take five gold off the party fund. Oh, as in one gold for all of you. I'll take one gold off the party fund. There you go. <laughs> Those are good. My good sir, do you have... We are about to, to embark on a huge fight with potentially a whole bunch of cloud giants in a flying castle. Why we are doing this is a bit of a long story. Okay. But 
If you have anything else that allows flight or slow falling or anything that might be helpful in that kind of situation, I would also be very interested in that. Flight. I think that was the only thing I had that could allow you guys to fly. Anything else would probably take me a long time to try and figure out and fashion together. We don't really have that time. But that's Thank you. I appreciate that. Do you have any kind of like musical shit or we have a buddy thank, who's not thank here. Thank you, Moose. Thank you. Uh... Oh, uh, like a like a music box. Uh, yeah, I, I could have like some some musical things. Uh, hold on one second. Or like an instrument or clarinet. A what? <laughs> a clarinet. A clarinet. A clarinet. Cl what about a theremin? Do you have a magic theremin? <laughs> oh, I got something great actually. That's on this list. Uh, he comes back out <laughs> with a small barrel, a horn attached to the front of it, and a crank on the side of it. And he says, "Oh, this is a barrel organ. If he wants to use that." Uh, you can crank it and it makes noises and then you can put your fingers on the side and make different notes happen. And he like cranks it up and moves the different notes and it's like bah, 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 bah. So not the like epic Nordic hurdy gurdy, but like Not the gurdy. <laughs> it is a barrel organ. Okay. It is a musical instrument turn the crank to play. That's on this list. <laughs> Does it do anything like No, it's just made out of like a barrel and cog and like a, a bunch of seriously like intricately woven cog wheels and... Okay, I mean this is cool, but do you have anything cooler i just mean like zell's getting some flying boots like i don't want to go back and be like here's zell here's some flying boots oh barty by the way we got you a music box maybe that music box can create explosions yeah we just haven't found the right note combination yet also it looks really heavy so if he hits somebody with it <laughs> it's a projectile <laughs> oh my god Bucky, 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 I figured it out. Just make this thing capable of reaching the brown note. <laughs> and, and we're done, right? That's like it. I'll That's it. I'll roll to use it, and if I hit some sir, some one number. Roll a D100. Yeah. And if you get a hundred, if you get a hundred, they shit themselves. <laughs> Otherwise, everybody else shits themselves. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> everyone else shits. Out of agony. <laughs> okay, we'll go with this one. He turns and he says, oh, wait, I forgot. This does have another feature. And he presses a button on the top and the horn actually like pops out a bit more. And he says, uh, it also does this. And he presses the button at the top and you just hear boom as like this huge sound like rattles everything in the room. Metallic components just start like falling off and like shakes the whole room. Uh, Moose is like clutching her ears and is like, you didn't have to demonstrate. Everybody make a constitution saving throw. <laughs> Jesus, man. You know, I've seen this puppet play called The Mask where this happened. 19. 18. A 10. Zell, you take 18 points of thunder damage. Oh my fuck. And the other two of you take nine points of thunder damage. And also, Zell, you are deafened for a minute. <laughs> Might I also suggest that I am blown out of the shop? Yes, you basically go, woo, and flush straight out of the door. <laughs> Roll up on our feet like, again, <laughs> again. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Ow. Uh, everybody's oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Truly I'm so sorry. did not oh. need to demonstrate. Oh, no. Just a verbal description. He kind of like sinks slowly, sinks behind the desk. Are my ears bleeding? Where's Zell? No, you're you're good. Zell's like on the ground outside. Like, what? <laughs> Again? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> uh, yes, we'll take that. Okay. Uh, well, because of that experience, I'll cut the price down to uh 300 gold. Okay. I don't to have that much money. I bought this broom and this deck and now I'm poor. It's it's not it's not a purchase that is worth it. I I think that it's okay. Do we how much party fund do we still have? Uh 1129 gold. Uh can we do 2200 from the party gold? And I'll throw in one. We also have uh three large white dragon scales to sell, 5 foot length of chain. A frozen beehive. Oh, you know he wants that beehive. And the, the white dragon scales might be super, he might be super into. Also a bullseye lantern. Got some cooking utensils. We have uh, months old muffins and cheese. <laughs> He'll probably want that. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> we can offer maybe two of the dragon scales. So how much would that take off? Uh, the two scales will say knock off 50 gold. What about the lantern? Do we still want the lantern? Uh, it is just a bullseye lantern. Uh, I have the lantern of revealing that also gives light. Plus, most of us have dark vision now or something similar. All right, yeah. Bullseye lantern, we'll toss in. Uh, yeah, let's give him the beehive. See if he can make anything cool out of the beehive. 
You throw it, ice bees show up, they sting you, <laughs> you freeze to death. Cross element shit. Ice bees. So he'll take the hooded lantern and the beehive for an additional 15 gold off of the price. So that'll be now 235 gold. Take 135 out of the party funds. Sorry, you said 235. Right? Yeah, and I'm going to do 100. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, and now you have a barrel organ that is also a horn of blasting. How many, how many charges does it have? Uh, I believe one a day. Oh my God. Uh, however, there is a small caveat that he mentions that every time you use it, there's a 20% chance it'll explode. Oh, all right. You know, it's really lucky that once Barty told Zell that if he had to die, it would be an explosion from a horn. So it works out for everybody. Okay, do I have to attune to it? No. Yes, thank you. <laughs> no more give me attunement items. Does anybody want a pearl of power? I've just been sitting on it. I don't have anything to attune to. Give that pearl of power to Moose. Yeah, yeah. Get an extra, whatchamacallit? What's that incredible hunter spell? Pass without trace? Pass without trace, that one. Get a free pass without trace today. Really? Yeah. Fuck yeah. All right. Well, I'm I'm good here. Sir, do you know where I could maybe see if I could find other magical items in Mirabar? I mean, things are a little tight right now with everything that has happened. I know a lot of the merchants that were recently in the town left after the attack because they didn't want to be here for that. So I think it would be kind of hard to find anything as far as flying is concerned here. I'm going to use his counter as a little workspace. And then I'm going to write in it. I was like, hey, do you have a little piece of paper. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to write another note to Mary and say, uh, P.S., if you have anything that can do Featherfall, need about two of those. All right, love you, bye. And then I'm going to write that on there and I'm going to add, how much is a Featherfall charm? Moose is like waist deep in some trash and she just turns around and is like, make her pay for it. Make Mary pay for it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to give her the whole amount. I'm going to give her half. No, she's rich. She can afford it. I still don't like her. Yeah, I know. I might like her more if she paid for it. Once you guys get to actually hang out, you guys will find a commonality in things you hate, and you guys are going to be the best of friends. <laughs> I don't believe you. Mm. Well, smash cut to about six months from now. <laughs> uh, it would probably be like several hundred gold. Give her tin copper. <laughs> just like throw some change in there and be like, here, honey. I'm, I'm going to just put 300 gold in my bag. All right. Uh, you don't get a response immediately. Garble gets to work on your glaive. You guys have a cool new thing, the Magigon Cube. And you could read what that does if you want. Magigon Cube. This small bronze cube is four inches on each side and is engraved with many interwoven circles. If placed within five feet of a magical implement or a magical effect and given one minute to fully open, once a day, the cube will use the effect of a dispel magic spell on the target. In the event of a spell higher than a third level, the cube adds a plus four to the roll to dispel. If the cube fails, it gains one point of stress. Oh God, it's got anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> when the cube hits three points of stress, it will break and require someone with proficiency in Tinker's Tools to spend a long rest to fix it by succeeding a DC 18 Tinker's Tools check. The cube regains its ability to use to spell magic at dawn. There you go. And you also have some cogwheel winged boots. I'm happy I can fly. <laughs> uh, so Garble gets to work on your glaive. Uh, he tells you that he'll be it'll be ready by tomorrow, and you guys are free to go. When you guys are leaving, you see Mortimer walking in. He goes, uh, I, I've been walking around and stuff, but I remember there was something, and I was wondering if you were interested in it and maybe for a trade. Okay. Uh, and I take out the luck blade. Oh. I don't use long swords very often. I'm usually using short swords and I have one that's not like it's my old one from when I was in the watch and it doesn't do anything special except hit things, which, you know, it's good in its own right. But is there anything we could trade to use a short sword instead? I'm just imagining him taking the sword and like chopping off the tip of it and being like, there you go. There you go. <laughs> a sawed off long sword. He looks at it and he's like, hmm. All right. So all right, it doesn't have any charges left, but it's still a really, really nice blade. Let me take a look. And I'm going to say he comes back with a hilt of a sword and it has a button on the side of it. Oh, hell yeah. And he clicks the button and you see a blade that just retracts out of the hilt itself. And it's a short sword blade. And for the purposes, it's a retractable plus one short sword. Hell yeah. That's cool. As a question, John, is it possible for the luck blade properties to switch over to the short sword? 
so I can have my plus one on saving throws. To swap over the features, I would need some time. I'll have a late night tonight doing that. And it'll probably take me about 25 gold because I'd have to move the magic from one to the other. I would like to do that if you're interested and you feel like you have the time. Yeah, I can, I can fit it in as soon as I'm done with the glaive. Um, I'll I'll use some time. I'll go get some coffee and then I'll, I can stay up and do that. And I can prepare that for you. And I got you the cube. And yeah, I could do that. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, I give him the 25 gold and the long sword. I also give him my original short sword uh, and go... It, Feel free to have this. You can enchant it, do whatever you need to in the future. 25 gold is a wonderful price. Just keep this as a as a tip. No pun intended. Thank you. Thank you. And he goes right back to work on the glaive. All right, now Barty walks in. He <laughs> says, all right, I got it. No, just kidding. Okay, is there anything else you want to do with Garble? Nah, I think we have exhausted Garble. Uh, all right, is there anything else you want to do in Mirror Bar or you want to just rest for the night? Yeah, let's go to an inn. We'll give Barty his present. Barty, I got you this. <gasps> Ooh, a new instrument. What does it do? Does it do anything cool? Don't put, don't push, don't, don't push the button. D don't push the button, but it's... I mean, do push the button, but not now. Okay. Push the button when... What is it? Do you know what it does? Yes. It throws zells. <laughs> oh, it throws zells. <laughs> big hurt. Uh, wow, big, okay. Big loud, big hurt. Oh, but thanks for, thanks for thinking of me, Moose. Um, here, I, I've been sitting on this pearl of power for a while. Would you, would you like to have it? What, what? I'm not much for jewelry, Barty. Yeah, no, but it has a, it has some magical ability. Uh, it, you know, you regain spell slots after a short rest and. Yes. Yeah, you, you just. Yes. Yeah, I think you should, I think you should hold on to it. And she like takes it and is like, what the fuck do, where do I, do, mm -hmm. do I need a necklace? Do I need <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just pops it in her mouth. All right. <laughs> <laughs> if you eat it, are you attuned to it? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh man, you might I love choke. That. It's a choking hazard. That is a major drawback of the five E Dungeons and Dragons system, yeah, in my opinion. You've, you've said multiple times, as long as you sit with an item for a while, you never said anything about how to actually attune with it. Yeah, you have to attune it by swallowing it, and pooping it out. That's how you. <laughs> that's how you attune to items. You become you one did. with the item. <laughs> No, I feel like once you poop it out, it's no longer attuned. No, you have to get to know it personally. <laughs> <laughs> and the item has to get to know you inside and out. Please don't say that. I'm just getting a short sword. <laughs> I, I don't want it. <laughs> All right, I erased the Pearl of Power from my character sheet. It is now Moose's. So you guys go back to the inn and rest for the night. You can get your hit points back that you lost from getting blasted by the horn. You wake up the next day. You run by Garble Shop quick. He looks like he hasn't slept. And you get both the glaive, which now can hold six rounds, and you get the uh, sword that is now a retractable luck blade short sword. So it's interesting because like four of the barrels are the ones that came stock, and these ones are now the same size, but they're a different type of metal. Like as the other ones, I guess, were like maybe brass. These are like steel. It's very steampunky. You, you can clearly see they were, they were added on. Yeah. yeah. So what I do like, though, is that uh, in the original description of the Guandone, it says where the handle meets the blade, the designs resemble an unfamiliar looking dragon with its mouth open and within the mouth, two metal tubes on either side of the blade. What I find fitting is that he used tubes from the clockwork dragon to fix it. So it's it's kind of within theme. But he's like, yeah, I did that on purpose. Yeah. Sure. Yep. Totally remember that. So I feel like Shaolong would be fine. So I think now it's instead of it being, because I want this to look really, really cool. They're two like revolving ones. It's like three barrels on each side and they like revolve to click into place for the next shot. I'm into it. Hell yeah. Also, I will say that you do receive a notice back from Mary. Basically, she says, I'm super slammed right now dealing with a crisis, but I will at some point hopefully be able to free that up and be able to help you. Things are crazy, crazy, crazy right now since I've gotten back from last time I saw you. But here, have this charm of free falling. And also, yes, uh, hopefully I will talk to you soon, uh, but not right now. Okay. And then you see like, talk to you soon. And then it's crossed out and then like a little heart. And then that's crossed out. And then it just says, love you. <laughs> <laughs> working on it. Now, did you say she gave her a charm of free falling? As in you grab it and you fall freely forever? That sounds terrible. You just go up. I've been falling for 30 days. <laughs> just let the charm go. This charm grants you the benefits of a ring of feather falling. These benefits last for 10 days after which the charm vanishes from you. Oh. So you get 10 days of free falling. So hold on to that until you think you're within 10 days of falling. Yeah. All right. So you guys wake up the next day. You get all your goodies. 
and you know that the fastest way to get to the location you have to get to is to use the Harper teleporter to transport to Everland. All right. Has everybody done everything they need to do here? We're not doing shit with the mine? Yeah, I think... I don't think so. I mean, we were shown the different pictures of the giants. If our thing was for the fire giants, I would probably suggest we explore this, but we may need to get on top of this other situation first. That's my look at it. Let's let's head over to the shack on the out, outside of town, Sable. Okay. The map you were given by Crowen states that the Mirabar Circle resides in a stable house on the west end of the city. Sure enough, when you arrive near the northwest gate of Mirabar, there is an inconspicuous stable house sitting just off the path. And manning the stable is a familiar face. Wearing brown leather overalls with straw in his beard is Zaspar Bronzefire. He turns towards you all and says, Look in Trenta- Oh, Bardi. It's, it's good to see you again. Hey, Zaspar. How you doing, man? I'm um, good. Good. How are you? I mean, as best as we can be. We need to get to Everland. Oh. All right, yeah, I can set you up right now. He picks up a couple like hay bales and like moves them off to the side. And as you see, you see him move them over. There is a very intricately drawn teleportation circle underneath the hay bales. Hop on and I'll send you over. Can we all go at once? Oh, yes. I think this is my first time using a teleportation circle in D&D. Huh. Same. Me too. Huh. Cool. Mark that on the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> if you say that out loud, like, oh, Mortimer hasn't used a teleportation circle. Surreal's gonna give you like a, a look of warning and be like, all right, it's a little disorienting. If you're prone to nausea, just kind of point yourself away from everybody else. I, I think I, I, I should be fine, but thank you for the heads up. I had a very hearty breakfast this morning. I should be a-okay. All right. Actually, it's usually better to not have anything in your stomach if you're gonna be experiencing nausea because then you don't actually have anything to vomit up. So I'll be okay. Moose, like, gently takes Mortimer by the shoulders and, like, turns him slightly. <laughs> yeah, Cyril's going to say that and be like, yeah, no, I totally get you. And then position herself away <laughs> from the danger end of Mortimer. <laughs> so you all stand on the teleportation circle and you see Zasper rub his hands together and he begins an incantation as the circle begins to glow. You feel your bodies grow lighter, like a faint feeling of being slowly dragged upwards. Everything gets brighter and brighter until it all flashes white. Weight returns to you. You feel solid ground under your feet. For the guys, I feel like teleportation would most likely feel like, you know, when you're driving your car and you're going down a hill. Already know where you're going. And you just feel yeah. everything start to lift. And then when you hit the bottom, it all just drops and the boys go boom. And you're like, oh, it's like that. <laughs> yep. The moment I hit ground, Mortimer vomits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the brightness slowly dims. Returning your sight to a view you were not expecting. Surrounding you is upwards of 50 people. Stabs, wands, rapiers, long swords, all manner of weaponry that you can envision is held in the hands of these figures, and they are all pointed in your direction. A few seconds later, a flash appears behind you as Zasper Bronzefire appears behind you. He says, sorry friend, orders are orders. Walking through the center, holding no weapon, is the imposing form of Crowan Valharo. He meets Barty's eyes for a second, staring daggers through you. He begins to speak, and before the words leave his mouth, his glance shifts to Flock sitting on your shoulder. Flock Brown, you are under arrest on the charges of 58 counts of murder, including government officials, nobles, and members of the clergy, as well as three counts of high treason in the cities of Everland, Mirabar, and Waterdeep. Oh, fuck. You and everyone in your company are to follow me for immediate incarceration and questioning. If you refuse to do this, you will all be incinerated here on the spot. It would be wise not to disobey. Detain them. For Taking Initiative news and updates, you can visit us at takinginitiativepodcast.com or on Twitter at TI underscore pod. If you enjoyed the show, you can help us grow by leaving a review. I'm Jonathan Buckmaster, a.k.a. your friendly neighborhood Bucky, and I've been your DM. I'm Josh Perot, and I played Mortimer Greaves. 
This is Morgan Conroy, and I've played Surreal, and you can find me on Twitter at ThistleRaven. I'm Hannah, and I've been playing Moose. You can find me on Twitter at Tinder Organic. My name is Nick Figueroa, and I play the one and only Barty McFly. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at NikoFigs. That's N-I-K-O-F-I-G-S. Hello, this is Drew, and I've played Zell, and you can find me on Twitter at Cyber underscore Sasquatch. This episode was edited by Jonathan Buckmaster. The original artwork for the logo was created by Chow Santos. You can find him on Twitter at Black Salander. The theme song was created by Neil Martin of The Lucky Die. You can find him on Twitter at Bardic Martin. All additional music in the episode was created by Kevin McLeod and can be found at incompetech.filmmusic.io. Any additional info about the music used in this episode can be found in the description. All race and class information, the D&D 5e rule set, and the Storm King's Thunder module are properties of Wizards of the Coast. Any information about additional homebrew content can be found in the episode's description. In the summer of 2013, my friends and I wanted to help raise money for charity, so we decided to play a game of Dungeons & Dragons live at the Rooster Teeth Fan Expo. We raised a ton of money for charity, and everyone had a wonderful time. So now we play every week, and our podcast Dungeon Drunks was created. We chat about what we're drinking, we roll a lot of dice, we laugh a lot, and we generally just have a lot of fun playing Dungeons & Dragons. So join us every Monday. Check out our website at DungeonDrunks.com, find us on Twitter at DungeonDrunks, and subscribe to us on your favorite podcasting app. See you next encounter!